Right. Just to reiterate for those that didn't hear, I've not had any tea or a drink of tea. So it can be quick now. <laughs> right. First things first. There was sympathy at all. Welcome to, to one and all, and certainly to the new faces of the council. Thank you very much for doing it up and putting it up. So, the first thing we've got to do is the, the election of the offices in various posts and such like, obviously starting with chairman. And before you figure out the presumptuous, presumptuous. Yeah. I'm sat here because those of you might know we have the revolving chairman and we just happened to invite to and so on sat in here. I have an email from Andrew there which you might like to read out. Right. <coughs> so it says Linda, I'm giving a, this matter of being chairman some thought. I'm currently chair of the Neighbourhood, Neighbourhood Plan. Planning Committee, and this is one odorous enough for the year. I'm prepared to be Vice Chair for this year if elected, and as a result, I'll be prepared to take the Paris Council Chair next year. So that's, so that's Andrew Man. yeah, putting himself out. So that's a lot, isn't it? So, yes. Could I have some nominations or people yeah. volunteering to, to be Chair? We want to hear you. Uh, we'll 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 you. Want to nominate you? Who's you? I propose you for. Yeah, I'll we'll we'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Forward to be vice chair. Oh, yeah. Second, second. Yeah. 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 Actually, I give somebody your phone again. Called it that one. Well, so I'm happy to be chair, and Andrew yeah. is clearly to be vice chair. So thank you very much, Stephen. Did you sign? Sign. Sign. Continue with it. 
I just wondered if anybody would like to join him. Yeah, 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 he's not resigning from that. I just wondered if anybody else would like to do. I think they need one. Yeah. 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 Well, that's very <coughs> My wife's on it as well, so I'm not going to go on the same thing as her. Don't mean that. We've <laughs> 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 just been aware that obviously there is a village hall committee, and for those that didn't know that there's a village hall committee. Yeah, sure. And then another one is the neighbourhood plan committee, which is hopefully going to be a short term one because once we've got this neighbourhood plan, sorted, there will be no need for that. But it is a very important thing to be on for Marchington. It, it's, you know, we can't stress how important it is with all these you know, alleged planning applications and approving and such like. So again, if anybody's interested in, in joining... Andrew Mann and Brian are already on there, aren't they? Andrew, yeah. Brian and Darren are Darren. already on there. Yeah. 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 Andrew is the chair. Chairman, yeah. yeah. So I'm happy to continue. Do you get happy to continue? Well done. <laughs> yes, I'll do the same. Yeah, that's what started. Excellent then, thank you very much. It doesn't mean that nobody else can do go no, 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 no. I think they're doing a great job anyway. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm on the action group, so perhaps it would be as well for me not to be on the street. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's it's really it's really yeah. Pardon? Oh, yes, yeah, it's very Yeah. 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 To start with, <coughs> we'll go to the annual camps now that we're all mailed out. All mailed out to which hopefully. So, you know, just yeah. ask, did you not have anybody on the flood committee? Mm, the flood committee is not associated, the Paris Council will help out, but it's not. not yeah, I know, not, I know we're not sort of tied in with them, but we don't have anybody that sits on it then to sort of like to report back what's going on with what they're no, doing. No, no, right, no. Okay. No, that's fine. They come along and report from time to us. Yeah. Yes, I know Tony comes along. That's right, yeah. No, yeah. there's no, there's no... I think Andrew goes along, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. certainly commented, yeah. yeah. But there's no tie up other than we have where we can. So, no, no, so that's why there's no official representative. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. The annual council was emailed to you. Yeah, so was yeah. yeah. And, but very thoroughly audited by John Wood as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, proposal and seconder, please. Proposal and seconder. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And, and then, could we record a vote of thanks to John Wood? And then we yeah. supply a gift. Yeah. Because he does these accounts, yes. he doesn't charge us. Mm -hmm. So we give a bottle of wine or two. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we also uh, <laughs> need three new signatories for the checkbook. There's a... I'm one. I'm one. So, not going to be one then, yeah. <laughs> um, um, now, it, it's a little bit of a, a lengthy process, <coughs> I go yeah. to the yeah. bank. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, I, I go to the bank and then I, and it, what we have to do is basically start all over again when you change signatures, it's not easy. So mm. I will at some point ask you <coughs> to go into the bank, unless you bank with the Royal Bank of Scotland. Got mm. No, we need another three. We need six. Well, well yeah. We need four, like the checkbook has to have two signatures yeah. to, to be right. Yeah. So the more involved. people that we've got that are signatures, if, for instance, if, if Brian and the Gordon weren't in, the checks wouldn't go out. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be yeah. and I'm Royal Bank of Scotland as well. So. Yeah. Well, it's so probably if, easy if, if you're Royal Bank of Scotland because they'll probably have your account. So that's right. um, you'll just ring up and say you've got my account or pop in. It's in Utoxita, so at some point I will be asking you to pop in and either identify yourself or something with the bank. Okay. When I've got to that stage, yeah. uh, it, it's a bit difficult. You did it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, they, they don't make it easy for you, Richard. So the existing signature will be used to refresh as well? Uh, no, they yeah. will just automatically right, go okay. over, so unless they've know. changed the system. If they have, let me know, my course. Okay. They will help. They would be useful, actually, because when I went along, they said they had that message for 28 years. <laughs> so they've been, it was even my checks perfectly happy. So we can find a few things out. They've moved away from Craig. That's a chunk of it. Well, we would have had it. Yeah, I think that's 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 it. Yeah, I think that
Right, well, that's great. It's how we Linda will yeah, be yeah, always moving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it just means that at the, as we go through the agenda, you can come to the finance side of it. The checkbooks pass out. You have to have two signatures, mm. so it's just easier. For everybody's in a signature. There is there is one uh, position that you know, we actually haven't talked about the financial officer. <coughs> is, you do the financial. Yeah, which chair. is currently means which is a position I'm always, I go to Linda's house and check the accounts to make sure that the checks that have gone out are clarified in the board. That's yeah. done every three, three, four three, months. Four months, every quarter. Yeah. I'm sure every quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every so, quarter. So what I'm getting, I can't sign the checks because obviously that's... Mm. So if everybody else is, that's great. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that down here you actually haven't got three people to sign it. Okay. Sure. Right. Oh. <clears throat> so you. So, well, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you want to propose an answer? Or not? Do you want to propose it? No. Well, no, it's just it's a not done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, if you're not, we're not going to have any signatures. It's not an official thing, it's just something that so, one, sorry. a councillor, obviously, right. takes on that bomb. The next part of it is the chairman's report. Uh, it is. This is the report that appears in the Paris magazine for the, for the last couple of months. Yeah, it's not, not really a chairman's report because we've had to change chairmans and things, so it's a compiled report yeah. <laughs> by Paul, more than the chairman's report, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm writing this report because 2014 was a very turbulent year for the Parish Council. With two, two chairmen resigning, one leaving the council completely, and one council resigning with immediate effect. This disruption meant we had to adopt a revolving chairman policy. And for this meeting, it's my turn. And now, thank you all, I'm taking it up permanently. Following our... <coughs> yeah, now I'm taking it permanently. Throughout the year, we've taken up many different schemes and ideas, many resulting with a positive outlook, some still to be resolved, but I've listed some below of the major projects. The Neighbourhood Plan. This is a hugely important document, which is being chaired by Councillor Andrew Mann and supported by many members of the village and council. So important is it that we have sorted and received a grant to employ professional assistance. The action this group takes could have long-lasting effects on how the village will look in the future. The process has still some time to run, so please keep filling in the surveys and attending the events the council put on. The best kept village. We again entered this competition with high hopes, but last year's winner it must have been a burden, as even after upping our game, we came close to that top step by being awarded a good second. <laughs> leaving us with the opportunity to climb back on the top in 2015. Having seen off the massive windmills that were con considered for the woodlands a few years ago, we were presented last year with the option of solar farms. We told a much less obtrusive system. So far, one has been approved, but it seems these schemes will remain with us for a while. Due to various changes in planning, we seem to have been inundated with applications for housing developments. Most seem to have uh, mustered a well-informed and active group against such proposals, but our neighbourhood plan is still one of the best defences we can use, and we'll need to continually support it. Tree planting. The full name of the council is Marchington and Marchington Woodlands Parish Council. And, that, and it is with great pleasure that Jane Hilton and friends and with help from ASDA planted many trees down Green Lane in our community orchard. And the council were busy replacing trees that had been removed in the playing field in Silver Lane. With all this planting, maybe we should drop one of the Marchitons from our name and just call ourselves the Woodland. <laughs> <laughs> Flooding. We now have a very active flood committee. And following several well-attended meetings, hopefully we now have the ear of our recently re-elected MP, Andrew Griffiths. <coughs> With this support, hope is high that action will be swift in making the recommended changes to reduce, if not stop, the flooding in our village. 
the village hall. As the village hall is owned by the council, we are very grateful that the village hall committee has been improving the visual effect of the outside of the building, with new doors and windows, and internally updating the toilets and curtains and painting, making a very useful building even more attractive, we hope will be as well used this year as it was last. The defibrillator. In council terms, this was a very short time from conception to installation of our village defibrillator, which is now operational in the wall outside Martin Village Hall. Thanks are owed by the whole community, those involved, especially the Dog and Partridge customers and friends. With fundraising being so successful, there is hope that further opportunity may arise to install a second machine at Martin to Woodlands Village Hall during the coming year. Disruption. Due to the filming of our meeting, several councils reconsidered their positions and either stood down or resigned with immediate effect, causing the remaining councils to take extra tasks above and beyond their already busy workload. At the risk of repeating all parish councils' words, this is an unpaid role and any action during our meeting by members of the public putting either us as could have been the case when rent a mob turned up in force at our February meeting, causing huge disruption, not to mention distress to councillors, the parish car, and a large number of residents who have come to listen to and make comments on their neighbourhood plan. Or actions that are indirectly put our means of earning a living at risk, we mean that the parish council that will inevitably suffer. There was for a period a very serious possibility that the parish council would pass the running of the parish to the county council. Thankfully, I can report that the village rally round offered tremendous support to all remaining councillors and the crisis was averted. The council would like to thank everyone and anyone who contributed to that support as it showed us that our efforts are appreciated. Moving forward, the local elections have resulted in new faces joining the council with new ideas and I can only hope in the future that the few will consider the wishes of the majority when exercising their de democratic right to fill. Yeah. Finally, I would like to thank the previous councillors, Mark, Chris, Janine, Jeannie and Robert, who either resigned or retired during the year. And thanks to all councillors who stepped up to the role of chairman during the interim. I would also like to congratulate all the councillors who chose to stand again and please report that all have been re-elected. So democracy worked and someone out there thinks you're doing a good job. Congratulations as well to all the new faces around our chamber table and a warm welcome to you and thank you for taking the challenge joining the Parish Council and I know you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Ian, would you mind just pulling that blind out? Yeah, of course. Oh, this is a test for. That's great, thank you so much. Adoption of the standing orders. These are all on the website so if at some point you go on the website i think i sent you an email didn't you saying that they're on the website if you could just go through those um so that you are familiar with them all. Mm -hmm. ones, please. And the ones that's, that are on there mm -hmm. so that I can read there's nothing in there, is it? No, there's nothing. No, there's the standing orders, publication scheme, guide to information, code of practice and financial regulations. I mean, it doesn't mean we shouldn't read them again, but I'm just... just oh, you can read them just, all the time, I don't have to change them. Require a proposal. I do, please. I have a proposal in a second. Thank you. Thank you both. Is there any other business on that agenda? You went to the uh, annual Paris Devon meeting now. Actually, I wasn't going to say anything, but I will say something. Um, the, the word in the chairman's report, I don't mean to sort of like to, to, sort of like to 
put down what you've put in everything, but um, do you think that some of the wording in that might be a little bit emotive in regards to the filming? Because, and this is no offence to you, Brian, but I think the reason why we ended up in the situation we did in February was because some of the wording in the Chairman's report was too emotive at the time in the Parish magazine. And I think that maybe we ought to just sort of like be a bit more sort of factual. Not saying that it isn't, but just remove any sort of emotive language from it because we don't want another situation like that again. To sort of like to just to say to draw a line. I think it's being drawn. Isn't it? I mean, well, it has had we've had the elections, yes, but I think. And that this is a review of what happened last year, and the situation was really quite critical. No, I know. Right? And is there any particular wording that you? Well, not, not about sort of yeah, going through and everything. I mean, it's, it's just an observation to me, it sounds a bit emotive, that's all. So, I mean, it's, and it's not a criticism because I appreciate that it was a very difficult time for everybody who was in the council. Really, it's factual. No, I know it's factual. I know it's factual. I'm just saying that, that, you know, I wouldn't want to sort of pour oil on the flames and sort of like get everything going now. I'd rather sort of like to draw a line under everything and just say, well, we are where we are and let's just move on by not sort of making a big deal out of this again, really. Can I suggest, Paul, that you and Julie have a discussion afterwards and... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I can read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 OK, thank you, Matt. Yeah. We'll go on to the amendment modification that you want to make. If you email it to Julia, and we'll discuss it between us, between you, because it has to go in the Post magazine, yeah. I think the 15th is the cut-off date. Yeah, yeah. I think if we email it, then you can both spell it in. Yeah, quite right. Yeah, so you can see it in black and white, so to speak. Yeah, very well. Yep, thank you for that. Uh, right, moving to the agenda then. Apologies for the same as they were before. Have you got any dispensations or declarations of interest about the agenda? Yeah, Right, this is the public participation of the meeting. Mm -hmm. but the I take it Rob is not a tick hasn't arrived, so if you want to move on to Mr. Harrison, that would be the better. Yeah. I would like to stand or remind <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll sit then, that's okay. okay. Uh, good evening everyone. Um, good evening. My name is Neil Harrison. Um, my wife and I purchased Woodlands Cottage in November last year. We're not developers, we want to stress that from, from the start and we want to make the cottage our long-term family home. We're not new to the area, we spent the last 12 and a half years in Newbra, and prior to that we've lived in the surrounding areas. Woodlands Cottage is an ex duchy property, and they have to give their permission for external changes. Their agent has given unofficial approval, but we will still need to get this uh, formally approved in due course. The plans we've submit submitted to were East Asbury, we try to retain the cottage appearance. The proposed changes are to the rear and rear side of the property. We are trying to retain character, but balance this with the need for modern living. The feedback we've had from the council has not been particularly helpful. Uh, the new pre-planning service, for which we pay a fee, uh, doesn't allow for um, planning officers to come out and meet us face to face on site. So the written feedback is rather vague, but suggests we should reduce the size of the, um, of the extension. Our architects have pointed out that under permitted development, we can extend considerably without planning permission. But this would predominantly be at both sides and would be very visible from the road, which would totally ruin the character of the cottage. And we don't want to do this. Um, that's all I'd like to say, but thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, I'll try and answer them. And I hope I can count on your support. Could you just explain where in Thorny Lanes? Right. Do you know, um, if you come from Marsh and Cliff End, mm -hmm. Thorny Lanes, it's about a mile on yeah. the right. Uh, it's next to Greensmiths, who okay. I'm related to in marriage, actually. So we're next to there. I don't know if you know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing much along there, actually. It's next to Dutchy Property. We've got a long, drawn out process to try to get any work done whatsoever, which they charge a fee for as well, we're going backwards and forwards uh, to, to everybody. Um, but the bottom line is we want to keep it looking like a cottage, not knock it down and start again. 
not overdevelop from the front. We just want to uh, try to make it our long-term family home, um, and that's what we're attempting to do. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I don't you don't know if the road is to turn up or not. Do you want to speak now or um, yeah, I, I can. Or, I he mean, said I, quarter to eight. <coughs> or if you want, we, we can uh, come back to you. Yeah, you can come back to me because the, the questions I may ask or points I might raise, it may have already come back. Yeah, probably yeah. better. Yeah. 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 Carry on. So we'll come, we'll come back to that. And seconder for the minutes that were circulated. Somebody that was here last. Was that you, Yeah. And who is here with the one side? Just Mr. Anderson and I think he wants to wait and see. How long have you got? How long do you usually go for? I've not been to the parish council meeting before, so oh, okay. that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. The bar opens a day. Can I go back to it? Can I ask a question, Neil, on that subject? Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Yes. Why would the council come back to you and, and say reduce the size when, I mean, what's the, where are they coming from? You know, That's the problem with the pre planning application for service which you pay for. Yes, they do. Um, at one stage, they used to come out and do a field um, site face to face meeting prior to any application, which was free. We've had a lot of promise trying to get real feedback apart from quoting policies. Um, rather than use common sense. Because we could totally ruin the cottage quite easily if we wanted to, without any plan permission. Yeah. We could do four metres one side, three metres the other, we could go up to eight metres at the back, and all these single stories, which would totally ruin the cottage. Yeah. They look horrible. But we might be forced down that route if we can't do what we want to do. We don't want to spoil it from the front. Um, it's an old cottage, and I think we would like to retain that if we could, but we still need a bit more space. Yeah. And um, we we try to go to what we need no further. So um, that, that's that's where they're coming from. And uh, they must be working on some mathematics, though, mustn't they? Yeah, I think sort of sort, yeah. the problem with ex dutchy properties as well. I think it had been partly extended before, but I didn't think they needed any permissions. Yeah. The dutchy didn't. Um, there is there's a, a small extension, not done particularly well, and not planned. So. We're trying to make it fit for modern life, really. Have you got the plans? Yeah, just over there. Um, so if you can see those, it's at the back most of it. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, there's, a, there's a small double story which is at the rear and inside as you face it, so you wouldn't see it from the road. It's the dark part of the, of the cottage, if you know. You don't really see that part from the road. So um, you're extending and extending those? No, it's not that even actually. It's not even that. Um, that didn't have building control. That, the Dutchy were all into themselves. To be ah. um, we're just trying to put it right so we can just just keep it for it as our long term home. Um, well, I think mean, technically the Dutchies don't require any planning. No, they? they don't. But they still are going to charge a bigger fee as well for them to approve the plans that we want to do. Yeah. Which is. Well, um, <laughs> So we've got we've got double whammies, you know. It's um, it's quite a long drawn out process. Um, we're paying full council tax on it, and um, you know we just got an invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're going to move to planning next. At which point we will discuss all the other things on the. Good 
No, there isn't actually. That's one of the problems with the design, the way that they film the roof. Right. That's yeah. what the architects struggle with. We're going to use wood, by the way. Um, we don't want PVC. Oh. We don't have to put in the planning application. It's PVC at the moment. Yeah, it's just what it says on the application. Oh, is it? Oh, well, we haven't decided. I just said keep the open standard and that little bit determined from that. But the front's already PVC. Yeah. Anybody else want to look at this one? Paris Council, and we just no comment. No comment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's um, it's mm -hmm. how I think it's really plenty of into it. Um, as, a, as a concept, I've got no problem with it. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, no. Can anyone go as fast as she takes it? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Can you put your money in I did have a word with the neighbour. It was happening because it turns out that it's fine. It's too late. 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 It's this is the first one. This is the, the first one, this is the one in Morton Lanes. Yeah. This is what is already in the past, is it? No, no, no it's not going to pass. It's gone we're on the Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's that's the one that moisty lanes. Yes, sorry, but mm. quite moisty lanes being passed, yes. This is behind the prison. <laughs> this is the one with the back of the prison right on the boundary of our palace. And they're yes. not going to have access. Well, the access to it is the building by the parish. It's the Yes, yes. That's the Bible parish, I'd say. Well, well, that's that's the, you're very right, yeah, yeah it's that one. So yeah. we won't actually see it. So, yeah. to, to, it's, yeah. so it's Can I say something on that? No? I, I do forget the moment. We're, we're getting the seed by these cells, panels. I think they see it was a weed link. Once you've got the uh, weed one, then the second one comes in. Now we've got a third. And I had a firm on, on about 
about three weeks ago, I was still thinking I was chairman, saying that um, would I like to give him a ring because he had a very good proposal for another solar farm within our area. And he was talking about the Washington Woodlands, and I just ignored it. I didn't even answer back, I didn't even go back to it. Because the thing is, that, you know, I think two is enough, to be honest. We've got this whacking rate one on the five, on the A50 itself, which I think is, God knows how many acres. How many? Hundred acres. Is it? Gosh. So I think, I, think, I think three in one area is quite enough. That's my well, there's one on top of Buttermill Hill. Yes, that's one there as well. I forgot about that. It's actually in our area, isn't it? Yes. It's Newbury. Well, it's Newbury. It's Newbury. It's Newbury. It's Newbury. Yeah. Yeah. The other side of the, the road. Yeah. Well, what I meant by that was yeah, we can't argue about you know, something in somebody else's area. That's yeah, but the A50 is in Nelmish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the proximity of them because you've mm -hmm. got 100 acres, if that's correct, uh, which I assume it is, and then you've got these other two which would make it what, another 40, 50 acres? Mm -hmm. I'm concerned actually that they haven't done any consultation in Drocon. They've only actually done it in March, and technically it sits in Drocon, doesn't it? Because uh, they only had a local legal to their consultation event back in January. It's Sudbury rather than Drocon. It's in the Marchington Parish. Yeah, it's in our parish, but mm. on the border. Yeah, but that's the thing though, I think it, it would probably affect people in Drocon and Sudbury a bit more in terms of the traffic. It would, yeah, 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 because it's great, it's great. Yeah, the problem we've got is that, as Brian's highlighted, they're already in the area now, mm -hmm. and to turn around and say no for, you know, what reason can you, you argue no for? Well, I thought that drainage might be an issue, because of where it is, because it's down that end of the because Newbury's not necessarily this particular site, but mm -hmm. the one that's in Red that's gone out on that, um, that letter that came out last week. I don't know if you've got this up in the woodlands about this other consultation that's at the end of this month. They had the one highlighted in blue, which is this one that's gone in there, yeah. and then the one that's in red, which is further along Green Lane. Green Lane, yeah. And yeah, my right. concern would be in putting both of these in such close proximity, with that end of the village suffering from flooding problems anyway, does this impact even more on it? Because going through what they've said in some of their reports, it's predominantly clay down there. And they're not proposing or putting any other land drains in. They're just going to be using the sustainable drainage system, which is already in situ. Which, to my mind, doesn't seem to sort of... Once you have sort of lots of vehicles traversing over the land like that, and you've got soil compaction, I don't think that that's really going to help the drainage situation down mm. there anyway. So... Is it clay or is it gravel? It's clay. According to the reports that they have done anyway, they it's have, clay. Yeah. yeah, they've had them done and they, they've had some uh, some soil inspections from Bishop German. There are reports on that planning application, but it oh. seems to be predominantly clay because it's in the river basin anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that's an okay. excellent point. Can I make one point, Mr. General? Not really talking about um, Morton Lane. I know that we've actually gathered that up and looked at it and checked it, whatever, on the 515. I'm talking about any further ones. So I'm saying two's enough, which would be. The one which is in Moister Lane and this one which is off Morton Lane, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying two is enough because of the moment. So you're just saying that no further consideration. That's right. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Just to say that's precedent for yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise you just keep yeah. on going. But as I said, there, there two, there, you've got this additional one which is in Green Lane and then these other people talking about Woodlands yeah. as well. Uh, which I didn't even bother to bring them up. You know, there was a bribe on the phone. It was, you know, we, we looked very interestedly at giving contributions. There's plenty of money in it, that's why I'm for Exactly, exactly. It's not saving the planet at all, is it? It's, it's making a lot of money, basically, at the end of the day. I don't blame them for that, but at the same time, there's a limit. Sorry, I'll shut up. No, I suppose. I think it's early days, isn't it, for them as well to see whether they're actually. I mean, they do produce electricity, yes, and that's and you can graze sheep under them and all that. But the point you're making is quite valid. There's no, there's no historical precedent yet, is yeah. there, whether it, it does cause problems or not. No, no, you know, exactly. So to just build them and then potentially have a big problem yeah. in the future mm -hmm. is possibly yeah. something that you could say. You know, can we have a moratorium on it? And just yes. Because the it's been built, you don't know if there is actually a problem or not. Yeah, I don't and know. And of course, once the solar panels have gone in, it would be very difficult to be able to put land drains in because you wouldn't be able to get yeah. in amongst the solar panels. It's a 25 year. Um, the, the, yeah, so you're stuck with them, aren't you? Mm. The, on yeah. the other side of the corner. They, right? they say it's a temporary construction. That's the trouble. Yeah. Well, it's, like, it's like a conservatory, it's only a temporary building. And no it's hardly likely to take them out after 25 years if they've been there, I think. But then again, we don't 
agree with you, but what Richard was saying is true. It, it, it is a 25-year plan. Mm -hmm. but, 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 and I know we shouldn't, but we're aware that there are others being muted in the area. Mm -hmm. This one is right on the end and the outside of our parish, right. behind the prison. That's so right. from the village perspective, it's you won't actually right. see it. The one down Green Lake will affect pretty much everybody in the village. So I know we can't do that because that hasn't been passed to application, but we need to be careful that, that, that we don't rule one that, yes, it will have an effect, but if you be too selfish and we've got to look after our parish, it's not going to affect us immensely. That you know, The prison will be shielded, in fact. We were saying that the that since these two applications have gone through, we suggest any further applications be looked at very, very closely. Yes, I, I think we need to definitely make a point yeah. that you know we aren't the, <laughs> the area for all well, danger of being flooded out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So in the green fields. Yeah. Black. <coughs> yeah. 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 You've got to just see the micro planning. People might eat. Yeah. Better probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Mr. Gold. I'm from <coughs> Waltons. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it, it has been mentioned as well, and you'll have to forgive me because we're sort of local ignorance, but um, about a memorial for a plane crash that happened in the 1980s that's somewhere around there as well. No, that's not happening. No, that's not happening. No, that's fine. No, that's not That's by the prison. Right, okay. No, that's fine. So, we certainly mentioned the drainage. Yeah. I think that's an excellent one. And certainly, what we would say is. I think soil compaction is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, drainage per se. Can I ask, um, Richard, about the Ashley Park Road? Yeah. Um, that's been mentioned in the past, but Building is being constructed pretty much there. I spoke. 
um, requirements, and there's also a way bridge to go in as well. So it's a it's a long term lease and a, and a pretty specialist um, specialist use. So that's the site that's existing. So the red line um, takes you through to the highway. Um, we've got to we've obviously draw that to the highway, but the application site is essentially this bit. And that's existing units 20 and 21. And then these are just some photos of existing units that you can see. And this is the site layout, so you can all see there. This is the proposed layout. Essentially, it comprises a uh, building in this corner, yard area for external storage of the, uh, the plant and, and vehicles that is to be distributed, loading area here. And then a way bridge in the middle to make sure that none of the trucks are overweight when they, when they go out. So two two accesses into the site, and the purpose of that is to allow the vehicles to be able to move um, through the site in a forward gear, so they don't have to reverse and do the do the beeping or whatever. Um, the purpose of the of the building is basically for the servicing of the trailers that the vehicles come in on. They come in on the, the sort of low loading type trailers. Um, the the sort of shift patterns of this, as it were, the, the day shift is basically bringing the, um, the vehicles in off the, off the loaders and servicing the, uh, the, the loading trailers as, as and when, and that's the, the purpose of that building. So that is sort of the main activity that's going on on the site, really. That's the, that's the unit. So in relation to existing buildings, is it higher or lower? It's, um, it's actually a bit lower. Um, yeah, it's, it's lower than the tallest ones. I mean, the overall height there is well, it's about six and a half to the ease, another um, two point two to the to the hoard. So it's overall height of about nine ish, just over just under nine meters. Most of them are probably close to twelve or thirteen, I would have thought um, at least. Yeah. So it's a little bit lower. Um, I mean, basically, it's not storage use. The, the, the building isn't a storage use, so it doesn't need to be any taller than to get a line in, essentially. Is so it's replacing old units. Isn't it? it is. Yeah, the two two old units. There's nothing new going there. I mean, there isn't something new going there. Yeah. yeah. And the amount of covered floor space proposed is, is about, well, it's less than half of what the existing, um, as you can see. Um, but the, the use of the yard is for the, is for the storage of the, uh, the vehicles as they come in. It's basically the small items of plant that you see at JCB and light vans and commercials. Um, so, so the use of the building, proposed building, is to, is to service the low loaders. And then the rest of the yard is for um, is for storage and then for moving moving the vehicles. How many vehicles would be knocking around on a regular basis? <laughs> it will depend. <coughs> Do you mean um, well, how many? Well, how many ins and outs would there be? You know, traffic basically. Ins and outs. Um, well, in the daytime, it'll be, it's about a couple of an hour that kind of number. Um, in the daytime, in the evening, um, it'll be fewer. But there is a. I mean, it's one of the things I want to speak to you about. There is a requirement for twenty four hour operation in this. Um, that isn't for moving any vehicles around, it's simply for the um, trailers arriving and being dispatched. So the day shift, the daytime activity, which is up to half past six, seven o'clock in the evening, is servicing the trailers in the building there, and then the trailers get loaded up with the vehicles, and then they get parked up in the holding area. And then because of um, restrictions on routes and basically the efficiency of the haulage industry, the tractor units will come in at night, pick a unit up, and then leave in full gear. Similarly, um, loaded trailers will come in in the night and then they just get dropped off mm. on, the, on the yard, disconnected, and the trailers leave. But there's no loading or unloading of the trailer units in the evening mm. or at night. That's all carried on in the day shift. Do I get this right? This is metal bashing at the end of the day. It's repair and, and refurbishment. Is that right? Or have I got that wrong? No, not, not at all. Um, I mean, the, the repair of the of the, the train use is basically a mechanic type operation, it's greasing the brakes and um, servicing whatever needs to be, so greasing the brakes, I didn't mean that, greasing <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good idea, yeah. you get rid of my view that, yeah. um, servicing the, you know, the brakes, the engines, mm. that kind of thing, it's a normal sort of mechanic type use. I mean on HGVs everything is a bit more agricultural than you find in a car, mm. but it's not manufacturing it at all, it's... Um, so we're not refabricating <coughs> anything at all? We're not, no. no. So these no, diggers coming from, you say, JCB? Yeah. Which JCB? Is it JCB down at Hilton or is it Roaster Cheetah? Because the route to there would be quicker if it went from Roaster or Pie Wood. Right. Rather than down the main 50 or you know, <coughs> I'm concerned that 
you say approximately two an hour, but is that two an hour that are going to be using the B road or the A road? I, I don't know, um, we don't have the details of which factories they'll be coming from. Um, I mean, you guys will sure know more about what's made in different factories, which is basically the smaller plant. So it's the, the small, it's not the sort of big heavy earth moving gear, it's the, um, the smaller compact, compact stuff, the rollers, the dumpers, that kind of thing. Is that really actually JCB stuff? It is JCB, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. why are they bringing it in to service the trailers? It's well, coming. Well, yeah, they're trying to get the trailers to service the trailers. Yeah, the trailers are the trailers. It's what I mean. Well, the trailers are the, the trailers are the vehicles that are used to transport the... Yeah, I know um, that. <coughs> So if they're not they're not owned by JCB. This is a company that provides that service. The contract that provides that service to JCB is the plan. Yeah. And this is their basically their storage and distribution depot, so that's where the trailers come to and leave from. So um, it's a storage yard as well. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. A storage and distribution yard here with the the servicing of the trailers in the in the year. So what's the trailers? What's a noise factor on that then? Is it well, I've had a noise survey done. Um, basically, the, the acoustic consultants, uh, where is that? The acoustic consultants have basically been out and surveyed the noise at the existing depot that's run by the um, the operator, and also been and measured the background noise on the extent. And there are, I think, is it? Um, well, you guys are getting on there better. It's one of the dairy operators. Is it Wayne Canton that's still in there? I know there's one or two of them that do um, that. They do. Um, overnight distribution. So they, they contribute to the noise as well. So the PDA acoustics have been, um, and you can see it's pretty, pretty transparent, and then we copy this. They basically measure the background noise level up there, the sensitive receptors as they're called. So um, you can see that's, that's, the, that's the end of Silver A, and then that one as well. Um, so they've measured the background noise and using the noise ratings that they've taken from the existing um, premises that this company operates, they've basically modelled it and balanced it out. Um, I mean, they, they say that the conclusion of it is that there is a, a modest increase in uh, noise, but it's not uh, of a level, it's about five, five decibels, which is not a level that would be perceptible. Um, I mean, I'm not an acoustic consultant, I suggest mm -hmm. But if it's constant, I mean, if it's constant, then it doesn't, you know, it's, you're right about the five decibels, it's not so bad, but if it's, in, you know, <coughs> one minute and then, four, you know, 30 minutes later, another big bang, yeah. it's that sort of, it's, that's, it's, that, that doesn't work, because that wakes everybody up. Absolutely, no, it's averaged out, and a, and a, five, a five decibel, um, say I'm not an acoustic consultant, but a five decibel increase is a, it's basically a, it's a fluctuation rather than a bang, and that would produce a, a peak, yeah. it would be much more than that. Where are they situated at the moment? Um, I'm not sure actually. The, the depot that we've surveyed is up in Grimsby. They um, they have a, um, a depot which they are some based in Crew. Oh, they're in Crew, yeah. Okay. So the um, the commercial vehicle side of things get unloaded at Grimsby docks, and that's where we've <coughs> taken the recording as well. Um, that basically shows the vehicles coming in and out at night. So the noise will be overnight. The noise will be overnight as well as daytime. Well, it will. There will be some vehicles. Um, Coming and going at night, um, but that, as I said, that predicted increase is, is only about five decibels, which is <coughs> So you said the prime movers coming in late at night to, yeah. to hook up to the trailers that's right. currently loaded. That's so it. they've still got yeah. back onto them, haven't they? Well, they, yeah, they have. They've got it back on, so you can get the reverse in noise as well. Yeah, a bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. But there is <coughs> quite, it's quite it's high, high pattern. There is high pitch, and it does, you know, there's one thing you can hear from the cat. Yeah. It's reverse and lower. It's reverse and lower. Yeah. 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 There wouldn't be any more than what we are on at the moment on calls and masters. So I think they contribute more to the traffic on the estate than, mm -hmm. than these guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the employment? Um, mm -hmm. The figures are around, I think it's 10, yeah, 10 full time. I mean, that's 10 full time staff who are essentially based in the, the, the building servicing the, um, servicing the training units. There's a lot of spin off employment for <coughs> drivers and others. Yeah, an intention to make that a public way bridge? No, not at all. No, it's, it's purely to check um, that the lorries that are going out aren't over, overweight for the highway. Uh, it's just a safety. So the, 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 the lorries, the drivers are going to park the vehicles there. I don't mean the lorries, I mean the drivers are gone. Um, no, not, not generally, no, because they will, um, they will do a, when they do a run, they arrive with the cab. They, oh, they distribute and then they go, the cabs won't live there. I mean, I can't guarantee that there'll never be a driver's car, but the, the general 
purpose of it is that the, the cabs don't live there, they live elsewhere. Because obviously it's a different um, service regime for the, for the tractor units than it is for the trailers. Where are the ten employees going to depart? Uh, well, is it, the, the yard itself is is all the so they're going to park on the they have some spaces on there, yeah. There's also a communal car park as well on yeah. the side of the I mean, we haven't shown a, a formal layout for the for the yards because it will depend entirely on what plant they've got on there. So to put sort of a lot of rows and rows of spaces is a bit um, folly, really, because it, it could be, it will just depend. I noted that the inspector's report which threw out the idea of, of uh, restricting on hours. Uh, you put in your own, well, you put in the report that was issued anyway, which yeah. suggested that there's no restriction on hours whatsoever, basically. Um, well, that was the case when the estate moved from military use to um, civilian use, yeah. I mean, I know there's a long history of the council putting conditions on there and people challenging them. <coughs> so. But yeah, that's the starting position, basically. Can we go on to a couple of technical things? Yeah, sure. Main sewer. You say foul drains to be disposed of. Main sewer. Now, is that the same sewer that comes down to yeah. Markington one? Mm -hmm. It is. It is. So there's problems, oh, yeah. potentials there. But then the next thing is. Well, just, if I can just um, just um, clarify that point, we've got less than um, less than half the amount of, the, of new build than existing. So there's the two existing units there. There to be clear the way. And the replacement development um, is is less than half the size of the floor. Not about surface. So not about foul. <coughs> no, indeed. Yeah, but I mean, foul comes from basically people in buildings, doesn't it? Yeah. They've got about half the amount of floor space. We're looking at it from the aspect of margin to yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Because of the problems. But then you say you. I think that's going to be less, basically. You, you don't know, know what range from. systems there. Well, uh, we, we don't. Put one low. Oh, one minute you say you're going to the main sewer, then you say, oh no. Where would you when we go on the site, we pay about £50,000 to have the new <coughs> site and redone, and re 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 which includes foul and, dry, and storm drains as well. Are they separate storm drains or are they combined? Some of them are separate, some of them are combined. Do you know if this is. I haven't got the plan with me. I don't know about that, doesn't matter. But we're not creating any more sewage than would have been there on site at present. Indeed, quite a bit less. Quite a bit less. The buildings that we're knocking down haven't been used for about 10 years. We're, we're just the aspect we've got proposed, other proposals for development in the village, which is going to add to the systems there yet. Yeah. And there's a potential at some stage we're going to have an overload. I'm just querying yeah. what's um, going on. You um, say main sewer, and I just want to find out if it's going into there. Mm. And also where the stormwater is going, because if it's a joint <coughs> sewer, that ends up in the sewage bridge. So as well, if any of that goes in there. And are there any provisions on your yard area to separate oil and all the rest of it? Are there any interceptors proposed? Yeah, yeah, there will be. Uh, and the council will attach a condition on that. Standard yeah. for that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, the yard is, is used for that purpose anyway, um, as, it, as it stands at the moment. It's an industrial estate, yeah. as it stands in it. But if it hasn't got any on it at the moment, well, any interceptors be, on it at the moment, that's that would be conditioned on the normal area, sort of thing, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> is there no, else? I think anything worries me is that he's extra noise. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's the, the, the real problem, I think. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say, Ron? Uh, no, that's it's very kind. Thank you for, um, for yeah. hearing us. Yeah. Shall I leave a copy of the application? That would be useful. Um, one thing I will say is there's a gentleman from the public who would right. like to, to speak. Okay. Yes, he's entitled to speak. Okay. Mm -hmm. like to hear what he's got to say. Okay. If you don't mind. I think you've uh, you've covered most of the, the points that I wanted to, to uh, raise and I was concerned about is the, the, the increasing level of noise. If those buildings haven't been used for the last 10 years, um, the, the noise level now is quieter than it will be should these, this unit be built and the yard area be used for uh, the storage of these vehicles. And I am concerned about the loud bangs and uh, uh, of the uh, the units being up, coupled up to the low loaders uh, during the night. Um, and at night time, can I ask, uh, when the drivers of the units arrive, um, they will hook up and, and drive off straight away, or well, they're likely to be waiting until the next day and have their engines ticking out wherever they no, the, the plan is that they, the cab units arrive, they hook up, they go onto the way bridge, 
and then they drive and they, they leave off. And that, that like, happens at night? It hap yeah, it happens in one, basically one movement. Okay. Um, and they, uh, the layout of it is such that they can basically do that in the forward gear. So they're driving, yeah, so so they reverse or leave the truck, leave the yeah. low load and then drive <coughs> onto the way bridge and then move on. That's right. And other units have reversing um, beepers. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, mean, I can find out for you. My, my understanding is that lorries generally don't. Um, but I would have to clarify that for you. So those are my concerns really. Um, and also about flood lighting of the, the area we already get a fair amount of uh, uh, not a light pollution from the, the estate if that area is constantly lit up all, all night. Oh, and one other point is that this unit is in, it's in line of sight to some of the houses, especially at the very end of Jack's Lane. Yeah. And it's also the unit is slightly raised above units 39 and unit 40, which will help with the propagation of noise over the village. So those are my main concerns. One other thing, sorry. Will the uh, inside the units have um, air compressors uh, and will the mechanics be using uh, pneumatic tools? They will, yes, yeah. they'll have they'll have compressors and, and airlines because it's lorries obviously the loading is much much heavier than um, but that will all be um, serviced and maintained to, to keep the noise down. What about changing tyres? Because in the past on the industrial estate we've had um, tyre Tyres, yeah, so it's nice nice easy to replace them. Yeah. When they're blown up, then they produce quite a loud bang. Um, they may, they will need to do that, but that will all be during the daytime. And they've got roller shutters on the door, um, so that can be that can be used. On the lighting, I've, I've just got a, uh, a lighting plan on the back of the, um, the back of the drawers. Um, I'll show you. I did have a quick look at <coughs> some of those floodlights are pointed towards the village, so we'd like to see them. Well, the, the lighting plan has been drawn up by Company called Abacus, which they manufacture um, the light fittings and they design them and they, and they install them and do, do layout plans as well. Um, the fittings that they're using is called a Trend fitting, um, Trend 2 fitting, which is it's a lantern, uh, it was a bulb, but it's inside a lantern and it focuses the light down onto the floor. Um, I mean, the old sort of flood lighting that literally just floods everything, that, that style, is, is very inefficient. You end up lighting far more area than you need to at the cost of electricity. Um, so the more modern fittings are, um, are much, more, much more focused and you can see from these, these light drawings. Um, I mean, if this, that is of interest, I can send you details of the lamp fittings and you can see how they would work. Mm. The uh, lights at the prison are exactly what Rob has described. Yeah. The lighting yeah. is all yeah. down. Yeah. So, it is in Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. You're all welcome to stay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Unfortunately, <laughs> Keep maintaining the occupancy on there. Um, you know, from a, from a local authority point of view, with business rates, this will generate business rates as well. And um, from our point of view as well, we want to try and help out this company locate on site, which we think is great. And if they have indicated that they would like to take more space, not for not <coughs> operations, but for, mm -hmm. for other storage operations. So if they can make it work on Marchington, they'd like to kind of have mm -hmm. another storage operation then. So. Okay. Hope with your support, we can, uh, we can do that. And just, just as a general thing about the estate as well, we, we're currently quite full on there, which, 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 which is good. Um, so from a business point of view, it's, it's, been, it's been good. But we're trying to add to the next level, this will be the first development on the site for, well, for many years. So we see that as a positive step forward. And then we've got proposals for further development on the site, bringing further buildings that aren't in use at the present time. Well. Just, just a question I have, and I'm not a lorry driver. <laughs> coming, coming out of the estate, yeah. 
of that, the entrance to the estate. There's that horrendous form. Oh, yeah. Now, as you know, there's been on fake left. Left. Yeah. No, no, just as you come out, and then you presumably you'll be turning left to go to the um, five, 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 five. And five. <clears throat> Yep. Or if they turn right, that's even worse because cars coming from the five and five can't mm -hmm. see over now. Trucks. Is it a lorry cab high enough to see any vehicles coming? I don't know the answer because, to that. Yeah. Because the answer to that is if they can't, it's yeah. a, with increased vehicle traffic, especially yeah. the weight of, of diggers on the back or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I can I'll probably answer that. There was, a, there was an application granted in about 2002, 2003, which is for a uh, a large unit on the, um, the closest to the road over the site does that sort of U shape. It was in there, um, and that that came with a with a clause that if it went over a certain size, there had to be remodelling of the access to um, to increase its its capacity. But it was when that application was determined, it was found that it was um, it, it was suitable. And it's difficult to say when there's been an accident like that, but at that point it was suitable um, for HGVs to use up to that level. The, the trigger for the, for the changes to the access was, was one of capacity rather than visibility. Um, so I think if the, well basically if the, the use of the, the amount of traffic on the estate stays as it is, then the, the county highways authority were, were comfortable at that time that it was, it was suitable for use by HGVs. Okay. There's a terrible black spot in fact. <coughs> yeah, it's just yeah. a very sensitive area for the community because yeah, there has been fake license and so yeah. and it is it, it, that home it, yeah. you know, in a car, I sort of say I don't know about a, a lorry. Yeah. yeah. Try to restrict it back to four mile an hour in the No. Yeah. Anyway, thank you both very much. Yeah. Cool.
I'm quite sure with that. Well, I'm comfortable with the lights because the prison is a classic example of modern lighting. Mm. Mm. You've already highlighted it. Right. Down it's, it's all down yeah. lighting. So yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable with modern lighting. Okay. That, that wouldn't be an issue. The noise, obviously. Yes. You would have to probably see assurances on that. Yeah. Sure yeah. that. Uh, definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think overall. Especially overnight. Yeah. Da daytime yeah. and especially overnight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you the back still. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a terrible junction, isn't it? It is. It's a great car, it's fast, but you're never going to end up putting the foot there. Yeah, but that's what I was wondering about. I don't know how high you'll see that. Yeah, whether you've got the visibility of the truck. The lorry's not going to be wrong. Oh, absolutely. There's a car coming that hasn't got the visibility coming over the lorry. For a very slow turning vehicle. The lorry can probably see see well ahead, but... At the end of the day, you've still got, a, you've still got right away to turn out. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, no, see a car, yeah. and the car's coming at 60. Mm. You know. Which they do. Which they do, yeah, because they're tapped. So we should raise, raise that kind of yeah, yeah, and turn think back to safety. Yeah. Ask them to look at the exit of the, uh, the estate. Was there a. Could we get any other vehicle traffic movement on that? I mean, other Didn't we do something? They said two a day or something. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two an hour. Two, two an hour. Two an hour, two an hour. Two an hour yeah, it's just quite a lot. It is if it's coming yeah. through the village as opposed to going the other way. That's right, yeah. That's right. I mean, if it's the little things, they're made in Rusley, but that's being moved from Rusley to your toxic day. Because there's a new faction to be built in your toxic I don't know how big these trailers are, but you know, they're about 30 foot Arctic, it? it's not really long than that. Yeah. So you're just trying to that plan, is that Well, it's uh, comments from the high That's a good idea, the traffic management plan, yeah. Yeah, what's the impact? Yeah. <coughs> yes, yeah, so. I mean, now we've got a bit about the lorry drivers, they will tend to go further but easier to drive. So, in theory, A50, A5 on yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, to go, yeah. to go from Barton to the, the M6, it's a, uh, and I'm thinking, good. Well, I don't know if you want to go through a Oh no, we've got the toy air drive and on the A50 along. That's a long way around, but that's the way it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Having said that, I did follow up to a large refrigerated type of uh, yeah. lorry. It was very long. It's got screw fixes in there now, isn't it? It was coming out of there. We've got screw fix. Yeah. Um, lorry's coming out of there. So is, it, is it worse that it's going to happen through the night? I mean, you know, is that absolutely necessary? It is for that. We have to go and get 10 employees to work two or three shifts now, haven't we? Well, I'd be asked to do that, isn't it? Have you got any comment? Three and third. Three and shift, that's beauty. Yeah. Uh, no, other than that, I totally agree with the junction. The, the, the nature of that junction is. Um, is so Do you think you can see it from the top? I wouldn't know. I would suggest you probably could, but I wouldn't know unless mm. I was a lorry driver. No, I wouldn't know, but it's 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 bad. It's a bad thing. It is, yeah. But if we emphasise that. Okay. Especially too and the it's noise. It's a danger, actually, if the two cars, one coming on the main road and one coming out, isn't it? Because you can either see each other. No, absolutely. That's right. The truck's there, okay, mm. you're sitting up there. Mm. Mm. Two fatalities and two serious accidents. Yeah, that with the road in the last Just on that bit of road, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to make a note. Well, I'll press those comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, right, the decisions from the last meeting, the erection of a general purpose agricultural building, has been refused. It's been refused. So the farm permitted. So the farm permitted. That was just uh, also a yeah. yeah. But don't forget, we won't sell about to get the more money we get. So we <laughs> 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 Can I ask a question? I've not looked that much on money. When they apply for the sale of the car, do they have to make 
an application at the same time, or is it part of it, the change of use? Because it is a change of use for many <coughs> It's a temporary structure. It's a temporary structure. It's a temporary structure. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's 25 years. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. It's a wooden structure. Yeah, it's, 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 a a temporary, temporary. it's a temporary structure, like it's a, it's a conservatory or a shed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Next. <laughs> Richard, would you like to, anything to tell us? You come to your bit of planning. Feel free to comment on that. I've got lots and lots on planning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, if, 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 if it was Tom Tom, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm Richard Richard from the local community office, or one of the local community office. I actually got a little, <coughs> a little list. I did, who do you? <laughs> Firstly, I've researched, um, which I should do regularly really for you, is um, the crime in the last, since the last meeting we attended. And you'd be pleased to know there's been zero crime at all in month. That's in March to March in Woodlands. That's no burglaries, no thefts, no assaults. Uh, we haven't had any antisocial behaviour reported. I'm not saying it's not going on, but um, there's been none <coughs> reported to us. Most incidents have been connected with the prison at the prison, not involving anything else, but in the prison itself. So, so that's 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 uh, one thing we report. Um, prison liaison meeting, Linda is. I'll be there. So I forget the date. Early June. Is it yes. Not? So I'll be I'll be there for that. What, what happened with the, do you have the piece of Yeah, that's a list. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't get any notices, that was all. Oh, well, I didn't really, did I? Oh, right. Ian has mentioned it, and people are not going to be before. We go to the prison and uh, leave with the truth, you know, and he tells us. Kids on the, the down Green Lane who built a. You know, the, what's that bit of grass with the. Oh, the community orchard. Yeah, the community orchard. There was somebody saying that there were kids hanging around up there and they'd built a, a BMX, not BMX track, but they'd, they'd been digging mm -hmm. and, and, and making, you know, mounds and things. Self constructed. Yeah, self, self constructed. Not in the great scheme of things, not major, and they haven't done any damage as such, but I think somebody wanted to make Josie aware of that, although I've never seen any kids. And in fact, I did have a look and I couldn't see anything, but that was one issue. The other, the other issue that I could remember was, was speeding again, um, particularly on, uh, is it, I don't know whether it's still Church Lane, but the, the road towards the prison, like, is it? What's uh, it? Is it, it's, it's, Morton, is right? it where, I don't remember, does Morton Lane start on the corner? It starts on the bend, yes. Yeah, That's so it's here. it's really the Morton Lane bit rather than Church Lane, but that, that section they were saying that 
it's, it's, it's happened before. Um, people have complained about speeding, and I am doing a re uh, refresher on my speed laser gun training on Monday. So that will be an area <coughs> where I'll be. Not going to be in the benefit of the Paris cats. Um, obviously, I can't say when and where, but uh, <laughs> the my, that, that will be if, 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 the, if the religious are saying that's a speeding issue area, then I will be there enforcing or trying to enforce the speed limit. I think it's um, also, Richard, I think it's um, people driving in the middle of the in the middle of that road there. Is the problem as well going too fast, but also yeah. you know, yeah, you can't really get out of the way. No, if you're going too fast, oh, it's the way the roads are constructed. Um, you know about how it is? It comes down this and bridge. Hill and Lane, yeah, because it's tight and it's narrow. It, it's so narrow, and uh, people seem to regard it as some sort of challenge, don't they? So they come down a hell of a balance. Yeah, together. we're limited with the laser device to where we can stand from health and oh, safety yes. point of view. We can't stand on bends and on it, it's yeah, just yeah. not practical. We have to have a line of sight. Where you, it's, it's, it's enough to to get the vehicle in the laser beam, yeah. um, but equally we've got to be on a on a surface and in a position where it's safe for us to stand. We can't sort of lean on, on a verge. That's why you know it, there's all sorts of regular. So we are limited what we can do, but I will try and do what I can. And, and, and if it's only a deterrent factor, which I, which is really what it's about, it's about all the police might be in marched and. You know, that day or this afternoon or whenever. So I will give it a, there's a number of other areas have requested me, but I will I will endeavour to go up there. If you are in Morton Lane and you see any <coughs> GOAMI vans coming towards the village, can you take their registration yeah. numbers? Yeah, well? and pass them to the you or to the prison either. direct? Both, either. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they shouldn't be coming through. They shouldn't, but they do, so if you and, and is it always the um, <coughs> those the white the, the carrier you know, with the, no, the, it's those yeah. Yeah. okay yeah I will Thanks. <laughs> stop um, and tell them off you know. <laughs> turn them around <laughs> sorry to take too, so much of your time but I've got three of the minor things the, the solar park you mentioned moisty lane yeah. that's yeah. been approved yeah hasn't it yeah. the guy who's like the liaison man from the company that's has been in touch with me and he we, we haven't been able to get together because of my shifts and he's he's, he's not based around here, he's based in Somerset or somewhere. But he's been trying to have a site visit with me at the site to sort of say this is where it could be, this is what we'll be doing. Uh, from a from a police um, security aspect is why I, where I'm coming from. Um, and I've got some things I need to speak to him about, bearing in mind what Derbyshire have told me about the big one on the A50 mm. and the issues they had. Oh, really? uh, well, yeah. yeah, these these panels have a value. Um, that's all I'd say. Um, so that, that that I'm going to speak to him when, when we get together at the at the site to talk about uh, what security levels he's putting in and various things. Would that be? Is there any mileage in a, in a parish in a parish councillor attending that? Site visit with yeah. me and him. Would, would that be something that you yeah. want to yeah. do? Yeah, because yeah. 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 if he's got security concerns, that might attract, you know, the wrong sort of person into our area. In, so, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So There's also the more moisty lane transport mm -hmm. issue of that yeah. lane, and, which again may may be more you than me, but but certainly I I want to say if you, when you when, when, yeah. let him, if you let, let him, him know, know yeah, 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 yeah. it can be in a day, it can be um, a daytime thing. I've no doubt. But um, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, no, that's good. Um, Linda, for you mainly, we've now the PCC has provided us all with these wonderful Galaxy S4 tablet things, which is all singing, all dancing. So we don't sit at computers in the police station, so we're out in the community. But with this now is a new mobile phone number. <coughs> so can I give you that? Yeah. Please? Are you ready? Yeah. It's I'm in trouble. Time. 0773 So if, if, if you need to ring you, you need to put that anywhere, if you put it in the minutes perhaps, and um, I don't know whether it goes in any in the Marchington uh, yeah. Parish, yeah. Yeah. what's it, it's got a name, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> if it goes in there, can you, can you, otherwise it's 101, email, Twitter, 
voicemail, there's a number of ways of contacting you, but um, perhaps I'll just read that back to you, it's 077 353 0783. Yep. Thanks. And lastly, this is a bit short notice, and I, I will email you this, Linda, but um, they want answers pretty quickly. Uh, again, the PCC, <coughs> I'll read you briefly, I'll sort of summarise it. The PCC has allocated £100,000 to Martin, no, to the county, uh, to, to target and reduce antisocial behaviour during the school summer holidays. Well, that's a considerable amount of money, £100,000. The captured age being 11 to 17. Um, have you, it says, any sites on your area that are running or could run youth activities to get the kids off the streets and into activities to prevent them causing, causing antisocial behaviour? This would include activities planned or in place by the youth services, the fire service, youth yacht, whoever they are, youth offending team, um, and, and they give various suggestions, uh, sport, anything really. Um, if a group of organisations plan events, they could be granted funds to enhance that event, um, and they can apply to Mr. PC seems to Ellis for that money. It would go through me. I would I would say that there is this group in Marchton that, that may, <coughs> may ask for funding, but it, it's pretty short notice that they want an answer pretty quickly. So don't worry about it if if there isn't one. It's that there is a there is a pot of money there. I mean, antisocial behaviour in Marchton isn't a major issue as I said before. But no, does anybody know of, of any worthy cause to? It's more targeted, I think, at Burton, Stoke, Cannock, Stafford, but, but it's, it's there. Uh, is there any trouble in Forest Side? No. 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 To... <laughs> so no. no. Not, not for a number of years, no. No, no we, we don't have any groups at the moment doing anything like that. Do this is to form an existing group. Not right. to eventually organise a, 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 a school, a, a new group. Over no, the new group. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. this is if somebody's got a, a, something in place that they wish to enhance or start no. as, a, as, a, as an activity in the summer holidays to get kids off the street and into worthwhile sporting mm. things. Is this a one-off initiative, or is it? Do you think it will be regular? Well, whether it could be, I guess it depends on its success in terms of the number of antisocial behaviour in <coughs> across the county. That are, you know, if they go down a lot in the summer compared to last year, then it will be deemed a success and probably be repeated. Um, do you, I can email you it, Linda, if you like. But as yeah, I say, they, they, want, yeah. they wanted answers by the middle of May, and effectively we're nearly there. Wow. So, so it, 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 it's not it's not my fault. It's just the system. So um, yeah. I can email you, but I thought I'd bring it to the council's attention now, in case of somebody. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Um. That's that's it. I think. Just just one thing. <coughs> <laughs> Going back to your crime statistics, yeah. the lead off the church roof at um, Church Broadland has been stolen three times, I think it is, in the last as it? Yeah, mm. couple of months. And just as a point of information, there was a dodgy looking transit and a car sleeping <laughs> around the Woodlands Church last night. <coughs> How do you know that? Because I take my dog to walk up there. And did you get the registration numbers, Councillor Nixon? I'm not going to, but it was a bit dark. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I yes, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, they could have been totally innocent, but yes, it's, it's certainly because I think he we yeah we have had it taken off the church here. I'm sure mm. it's been taken. Yeah, hasn't it? Three or four years ago. Mm. Yeah, if anybody sees any activity around either church, then please jot the registration number down. Leave it, leave us a message or phone the police if you feel it's happening there and then. Yes. Yes, it's, uh, there was another, somewhere else had it taken as well, not much, but somewhere, it might be in the Hall Cross. Well, the two were brought in, I know they, they took half of it, and then came back the following night and took the other half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 50 though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right. We haven't got much land on St. Peter's Church, or anything. It's not a great job though, is it, when you think about it? 
But yes, if you see anything, please let us know. You never know, it's uh, right. it, uh, part we of will. the bigger picture. So you'll be taking note of that note of the double service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can link them up instantly. Yeah. Yeah. I know he's got a Galaxy S, whatever. Yes, you've got your emails up on that as well. Sorry. Oh, everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's incident serials. Uh, you can, I can uh, PNC checks. So I can issue tickets with it. Sir, stop serve, uh, stop search. Um, vehicle seizure, and it, then the idea is it's been launched with the basic applications, and there'll be more and more and more text statements. So I've now got a, a keyboard and type physically type the statement. You sign it. You sign a box on. You know that you do for a parcel. Oh, yeah. And you sign the box, and I just go and print it at the station, and it gets stored in a file, so it's completely paperless. Oh, it helps cool. if you can type type as fast as you, Linda. Right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but but that, yeah, the, the theory is that um, there should be less and less requirement of officers to be in police stations, and more and more requirement to be out mm -hmm. visible because that's what yeah. the public want. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Ellis has decided this is one way of getting officers, you know, on the streets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it Apple? <laughs> <laughs> is it Apple? That's a Galaxy. It's a Samsung. Galaxy. Samsung. Galaxy. 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 Not every force that's got it. No, no, no. Staffordshire. Staffordshire is one of the, the pioneers. And we, we in East Staffs um, are the pioneers for the force. So we, we, we've had it in front of everybody else. And we're trying it and tweaking it. And we're not happy with this. So the, the idea is it will be force wide. I think by this time next year, Every officer in Staffordshire will have one, every PCSO will have one, CID, everybody. And takes um, pictures as well. He takes pictures as well, yeah. yeah. So has Josie got one of those? She has. So she could let me have her number. She will, if uh, I remember to ask her to tell you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your phone will tell us. <laughs> yeah, it, it does everything really. Um, it's still being tweaked and there's still a few issues with it, but it's, um, in theory, after. <coughs> the other thing is, you probably have police no pocket books as we have for you know for twenty odd years, and they're going as well. You won't, you won't have pocket books anymore, which is a, you know, you can't have, no, that's right. Yeah. It'll all be done on here, so you have a running log on here of your day, effectively. So it's all, it's all, uh, it's all can change. Speak, can you speak into it? No, no, no. So it's not one with little type where you speak. No, no, no. could you speak? <laughs> That's the advanced version. Probably easier. There was left at John Pine and then they were selling off phones for you. Thanks, Edward. Is that okay? Is it? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, anyway. Thank you. Thank you. See you on second. Yes, we'll see you there. See you there. Bye. Bye now. Let's go back to our planning then. The neighbourhood planning no. steering group, well, and Drews and Tia. No, um, time one. has started going back to the um, local plan examination that's now reopened up, um, and I think the first one was today, so yeah. he's um, started going back to them. I mean, it's open to anybody if anybody wants to go and well, just to observe. Right. You don't have to, uh, he's got various dates and times when he will be speaking on behalf of Marchington. So we can email Clive and find out of him when he's oh. there. I've got the, um, if, you, if you're interested in going, I've got some of the hearing notes, but yeah, if, if there's something in particular. Well, no, it's just a bit of moral support. Oh, I see, yeah, well, email Clive and ask him when he's going to be there then, because I'm not sure if what, Days of that looking yeah. when he's actually going to be there, yeah. I mean, I did go and observe when they were open before, and it's, it's quite <coughs> interesting. Um, you know, you can just sit there and, and watch what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the next um, neighbourhood plan steering group meeting is the 21st of May. I won't be here for that. Um, I'm away on holiday then, but Brian, I understand, is being secretary for the day. Mm -hmm. um, Very much <laughs> um, presumably Clive or Brian will be letting you know. I think it starts at six, I'm not sure, but I think... So, so it's that. I, I thought it was five, six. you said, but anyway, it's well, five or six, I'll, I'll, I'll define it with, with Clive and, and then sort of the thing out to everybody so that they have all clear whether they're coming or not. Okay. Um, we have, um, 
I closed off the grant monitoring form for the last grant that we had and I've applied for a new grant and I've had the initial notification that we've been awarded 6,300 to continue with the neighbourhood plan which will be covering most of class fees which is good news too. haven't had the official documentation to say that uh, we've but I've had the notification, but not the documentation yet for that. But as soon as I get that through, then I will um, we'll send it back. Is, is that the 6,000? 6,300, yes. Yeah. Which uh, should more or less, I would think, cover us down to, uh, towards the end of it, I would have thought. Um, and we haven't used up all of the grant money from ESBC, which were... <coughs> Sort of using for what we can't use for the uh, the locality grant. Okay. Any questions? Thank you very much. Well, moving on to finances. Is that the list? Yeah. That's it. That's what we need. This is the uh, list of expenses, expenditures and income over the last month. The monies received is the Village Hall Committee. Uh, it's a repayment for the doors because we claim the VAT back of 1150 Interest is £12.02. And, two pence. and uh, the precept grant of £14,649.12. That's the first half. We have a total <coughs> class for those that don't know, so that's the first one. So the total receipt there. So not bad. No, it isn't. Doesn't add up, does it? Is fifteen thousand <coughs> seven hundred and ninety. Eight hundred and eleven pounds forty. <laughs> fifteen thousand eight hundred and eleven pounds and forty. Which is what we received. This month of the outgoings are uh, to Clive, 1,261 for his neighbourhood uh, plan work. Marching Villiers Hall, charged for the meetings for the neighbourhood plan of £16. Blooming Gardens and Landscapes, they do the grass mowing and generally uh, help us out, £636.37. Uh, for those that don't know, that's Silver Lane, the playing fields, the playing fields the community orchard, and mm. various uh, places around the village. There's the Society of Local Council Clerks, £103. The that's the subscription. The subscription, sorry, yeah. yeah. BP Enterprise, that's the mowing of the forest side playing field there. Football. There's a football pitch up there. Uh, there's uh, Henry Hall, our handyman, £357.14, which is high for this month. Yeah, but he's done, he, he built a notice board, which I'm sure you'd all like to see. We've got a picture of some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But, but there is a reason why it's particular. Yeah. He's done a lot of travelling. Yeah. Yeah. He's built it. Uh, there's Linda, Linda salary and the extra hours that she's been doing is 591.36 from Linda's travel expenses to <coughs> 59 and off his expenses and off his expenses <laughs> and then the uh, <coughs> HM revenue and customs 671 pound 41 then we've also paid out which are the first payments of the preset uh, this is from November 2014 to for the year 2015-16. So we paid Marchington Village Hall £1,000, Woodlands Village Hall £1,000, St Peter's Church £325, St Peter's Church for the maintenance, churchyard maintenance £1,000, St John's Church for the maintenance £1,000 and the Marchington Tennis Bowls Club a one-off payment of £1,000. So all those going out, we've paid out £8,731.77 
Um, we've got in the bank after expenditures £47,388.48. Um, proposal and second of the loan, please. Well, so. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to properties and grounds. The Silver Lane Playground reports. As reported by. Yeah, this month. Just, 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 we, to keep the insurance premiums down, we as a parish council many years ago agreed that the parish councillors would every month go and inspect the playgrounds that we have uh, and bring a report back so that our insurers, should they ever, could ask and say, the only one check, and that's what it is. So, we were the post. <laughs> yes. There's a little chart with your name <laughs> and where you've got to go and do it. Yes, you've only had it today sent to you yeah. with the, a copy with the of forms. The, the two forms. So if you haven't been on your email, you won't have seen it. Um, I've noticed that. Yeah, no, it. Uh, and what would, if you do it then, the, the next meeting you bring it along and Linda does whatever Linda does with it. <laughs> Well, the idea is, is is to basically go and have a look at the equipment and the park and I'm sure that it's in good order. Just, yeah, yeah. just see if there's yeah. anything. We have you, an annual inspection where they go to the town on the a professional one. one. Which is usually about June, July time when they go. Right. Um, so, so that's yeah. what we're talking about at this particular part of the, the meeting is just whoever it was turned to go to look at the, <coughs> the playground in, in Silver Lane. The reason it's so important when we walk around to check for the chicken. Brian in his high vis. <laughs> well, I, although I wasn't at the last meeting, Linda informs me that it was a decision that we get a prize for. The, the equipment there has that soft, bouncy stuff on it. And it, it's held in by wooden edges all the way around it. Well, the edges are slightly falling away. I don't think they're rotting, you know, they're, they're just like falling yeah, just, away. Just falling away. <laughs> yes, yeah. that could even be that. Now, Linda's got a price of, of £2,000 to repair that. I have to say right at the beginning, because we have it professionally looked at, they have never highlighted this as an issue. We, as a parish council, are always saying it's wrong, it doesn't look right. So my personal opinion is the fact of paying £2,000 to do something that professional health and safety people have not identified as an issue seems massive, but that's just my opinion. I don't know what anybody else thinks, please throw your opinions within the ring. <laughs> I suppose the thing is if anybody had an accident and uh, caused a problem, we wish we'd done it. That's true, and I don't have. Yes. Why is it dangerous? Because <laughs> there's a space. You've got this foamy stuff. I don't know what you're yeah. talking But the, between the edge of which is timber and that foam, there is a gap. And I suppose <coughs> that you could run along to a little child and trip on the wood. You could trip over and land on soft stuff or on the grass. That's a picture. <laughs> Two thousand pounds. Is it? Is this a trip? Out of it? it does need doing, but it's a trip. If this will last though for well, a long period of time, though, is is that right? Yes, it'd be done for some time now. So, but no, yeah. yes. I, I mean, I think personally, I would like you know when it's your turn to go and have a walk, or if you get an opportunity, go and have a walk. I go down there and wear my kids. Well, so, brilliant. Yes. Well, <laughs> ask her if it's a hazard then. <laughs> But go, go down and have a look and see what you think. What's the two thousand pound for? Two thousand eight hundred. What, what, what is it replacing all of the material? But all of it. Yes. Oh. Not all of it. No, no, no. no, no. I thought it was just doing an edge. It's, it's, it's to cut back existing wet oh, right. wall one hundred millimeters from the edge to form a strip around the perimeter right. of the equipment. So what what was suggested is that you have a different colour so that you you know where the edge is. You see the edge. 
Well, not necessarily that, but it just just makes a feature of it. So it, it looks, it doesn't look like you're replacing the edge. No. It looks like you're putting a feature around the, the edge of it. Um, it's the, to remove and dispose of the wet pour, re-glue existing wet pour edge and curb edge, uh, supply and lay base coarse rubber, Supp supply and lay wet pour wearing coarse, reinstate of any damage to grass areas after work complete and the total cost um, is uh, 2850 plus VAT. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And is that that's for the silver lane only, isn't it? That is just for silver mm. lane. Right. Forest side is, is different because they're tiles. They're tiles, right. yes. Yeah. They have a similar problem. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. Yeah. And personally, it's never been highlighted by a professional, which we have to have every year. Well, it has, but as a, a low. Yeah, okay. Not, not, not well, as that's low. that's true, yes. It's, it's been, been low. Because yeah, yeah. that's what's going to happen. Very low risk, etc. Low yeah. risk, yeah. Could, well, could, could I make a suggestion for you that A, if you. I mean, we'll get an opportunity to have a look at it, but yeah. B, it is June, which is next month stroke July when we have the, the playgrounds professionally inspected by health and safety yeah. and let's see if they come back and say comment anymore because yeah. it's yeah. been a further 12 yeah. months since, yeah. since they did it yeah. rather than us yeah. rushing in and, and doing it. Yeah. To me it seems important. like a huge amount of money yeah. when maybe the equipment itself could do with changing because mm -hmm. I know when we had down the silver line the the thing that you stand on the swing round over when it's cool. But the, the new way of doing it isn't with the tiles. It's basically you put uh, like a netting on the ground and, and seed in it and that's it. There isn't there isn't any of this foam anymore. Theory being that you're actually saying there's a hazard and so therefore you've got to prevent any accident happening. But if it's just grass, you're actually saying there isn't a hazard here anyway. So Let's wait for the inspection. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't make our own comments. Thank you. The forest side. Uh, who's doing the forest side? Okay. Well, me, I'll, 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 the the thing is there. You're talking about the inspection. Yeah. 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 I'm doing one this month. I think. I can't remember which one is it. So. <coughs> So the second. Yes. I'm down forest side in June. No, we're talking about May, are we? May. Oh right, sorry. Mm. Right. Brian. Yeah. Somebody Brian. called Councillor Brian Darby. Yeah, forest side. He's doing forest side, okay. Yeah. yeah. Normally um, we would ask that it be done prior to the meeting if your name is up on the month. But because we were waiting for the new councillors and everything, I'm going to give them that. Is that a form for them to fill in or was it just to yes. take your own notes? I'll be now just a form for them to fill in. They look a bit like that. Okay. There's one yeah. form for each area. And if you go to Forest Side, then you have to go to the football pitch, which is, if you don't know where it is, you really need yeah. somebody yeah. to show you. So Can't visit. I know where it is. Give, you know where the football pitch is, okay. You made the map to get the playing field. <laughs> I think that's correct. It's easy to get to. You can see it from the back. It's just a mile and a half. That's breaking one's ankle. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mind of those those cabins down on the floor. Right. So the, the forest side playground. I do try to remind you at the beginning of the month, which probably is not a good thing, because now that we rely on me to remind them. I'm down for June. Well then, go. I'm doing January. <laughs> <laughs> right, on the forest side, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, uh, Henry has built us a new notice board. Right. Where's this one? Forest side. Forest side. Oh, forest side. oh I see. Well, it's very good to see It's what oh, one would call very rustic. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's very good. Yeah. At least the door opens that way and I don't have to hold it on my head <laughs> like the old one. But the other one didn't have a lock anyway. So. <laughs> well, no, no, no. <coughs> yeah, that's 
a hundred pounds. You paid a hundred pounds. That's why he's still the same. What a wonderful, good value. The expensive gentleman he is. Mm -hmm. A treasure. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Right. Green Lane. Green Lane. Apart from the solar parks and what PC Bolter said about. Being made to park. Being made to park. Was he all fast? I thought that was last year because they, they did. Didn't you go down and pick some up last year or something? Or something oh, like that. Yeah, the post was snatched up, turned up. Yeah, well, they were yeah. using the post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, I would certainly advise anybody, well, we've all been there, but if you don't, just to have a look where these solar parks are. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know we've just done it in planning, but you know, I think the one way outside the village is better for us than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have to have to start drawing the line somewhere because I mean, mm. you know, as I said, you, you could be there with a total of five already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that I'm against so I don't have solar parks and flipping turbine things. Can you mention that? The we passed the I don't know whether I'll do it in there. No, no, no. The, no. Yeah. Uh, the village hall. Mm -hmm. The tribulator. No, no, I'm just saying he's working. No. Um, no. That's, that's the good one. What is it? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I was asked to, well, Andrew was asked to uh, ask um, Chris <coughs> Tranter from Staffordshire who spoke joyously yeah. to. Um, to give us a quote to replace the two notice boards mm -hmm. outside, <coughs> outside the village hall. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> so Linda's got a problem <coughs> of matching the wood to the doors uh, of one notice board of eleven hundred and fifty pounds. Oh, sorry, two. Two, board, two is eleven hundred and fifty pounds. <coughs> It sounds an awful lot of money when Henry was talking about it. But, but, it would match. Well, it's in an oak, though, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, what I was going to say, that's basically what we've come up with. Oh, that does look good. But Linda's also, because 1100 sounds an awful lot of money, but Linda's also got prices from professional notice board people for Paris councils. And that's in line. You know, they all vary from you know, 1100 up to £3,000, you know, there's a huge variation in cost. <coughs> Sometimes you need to tell how many is on the sun. It is realistic. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But is that love, Henry? It's realistic. Uh, <coughs> so, I used to accept that one, do you? No, 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 I don't know. What I was going to <coughs> suggest is that some of these professional ones is our, our notice board with brass, brass plaques on them that you can have and they are a notice board as opposed to trying to blend in with the village or this is highlighting itself as a notice board. And there is various, as an example, this particular, I'm not saying choose this one, but this has got three different things which is what we need to replace the two notice boards out there, ones for Paris Council, <laughs> ones for general business and ones for the shop. Yeah. So as an example that that's just one. Now that is more than a thousand, but these are professional, some of them are even metal with professional locks as opposed to little lock with a key that you can put super glue in and never own it again. And I just think if we're going to have you see that's got a professional brass name in the top. Right. And realising that they are that sort of money, I personally think well, we ought to. Well, the putting this stuff away, which one do you propose? Have you any quotation on that one? No, the, 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 Linda's got. If we're looking like that, I mean, what I'm getting at is that that's nice. And it's made by a jeweller, I'm sure it's all well and good. But these are professional people who make notice boards for Paris Council. I just get a quote. Yeah, there will be more than. than that, mm -hmm. but if we're going to spend some money, we might as well have a, yeah. a, a decent mm -hmm. pound. Yeah. When we were doing the best kept village, 
to know this board was highlighted as something that could do. Yeah, it's an attacking book. So that, that's what I was sort of proposing. So if we ask Linda to, I mean, I don't know what to think about three windows, which is yeah, what we need. Yeah. So, we, so we've got the two out there now, so we'll just be having the one on the building. Correct, so like, that's right. Them, I think we need a big one. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, uh, what I quite but like about it is, is the heading, you know, you know it, it yeah. makes it predominant. <coughs> this is what it is, you know, a notice board. Mm. This one here, it says, uh, recycled plastic material which will not warp, rot, split or fade. Um, that, that's one with there. I mean, they come in, in, in all sorts. You can have metal, you can have them where you haven't got the pins, you've got sort of magnetic things that hold them on. Magnetic so, at the back so you don't have to eat, you just put it. You can have any colour under the sun and you can have written on it what you like. So, so should we ask them to yeah, get yeah, as a yeah, price for yeah, yeah. one? Because obviously yeah. they're like these are posts. Yeah. 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 Three, tier. yeah, three window item with a name on the top. It got to be quite a big one with Martin to Exactly. Should they done? But they probably will come out more than the other yes. one. So But I, I think it will be more than the other one. Whether you want it to match the doors or whether you No, because it's a it's a notice for in my opinion, different from the village door. We're not trying to blend it in. And you'll be able to yeah, shut it all the time. As the doors which are more protective than the, the notice board won't fade as much as the notice board and the, other than when they're brand new, they're not going to look the same. Okay. Then would you mind getting a price for that with the wooden? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right, the highways in general purpose. For those that don't know, and I apologise for those that do, this is the Tame Gang, or the, the highway people that come round and do little jobs for cut edges and other things. <laughs> so if there's any jobs in woodlands or anywhere in the village, these people tell Linda and then they come round twice a year. And then you look they get done. <laughs> and then you look they get done. And they do do a very good job, it is fair to be said. It doesn't cost us anything. So it is important to use them. So that's anything from cutting branches that are around <coughs> signs and I mean cleaning signs, you know, anything like that. Yeah. 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 They won't do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ditches is a, is, is a grey area because it's debatable. Who owns the ditch? Uh, yeah, yeah. The so it, it's, it's a bit of a can of worms. That, so. <laughs> well, they won't do it in the woodlands. No, they, 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 they don't. Do yeah, well, that's true. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. Is it county or any SPC? Yeah. Yeah, so the, 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 the point being is, if you can see any of the Asselinda, and we can always ask them, and what we do is give them a huge long list, and they look at it and say, no, 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 yes. <laughs> so, if we don't ask, we don't know. Do we? Oh, so, no, it's however mad or not mad, has come to do. Okay. You know the, um, the roads, for example, Green Lane and all the potholes down there, I mean, what, how does that come up in this sort of Green, discussion? Green Lane's gone round in circles a lot because um, it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, it's quite a dangerous road for walking down in, in the yes. sense of yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they, they, they have clear bits of it and they have. Sort of There's lots of holes on it, that's the thing. Filled a few holes, but when you go to Stafford County Council about the potholes, because it's not used, because it only goes to the farm, it, it gets put very low <coughs> on their list of priorities. It, it's something that we do keep reporting, but... Right. Uh, and what we don't want to do is adopt it by... No, no, no. The no, 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 no. minute we've done that... That's your fault, you know. Yeah, we'll have to do it for any of the day. Cost. Correct. <laughs> but if anybody does say to you about potholes, you can go direct on Study to County Council website and report, report it sure. online, um, direct. Where's my brother? Or anything like that. Or, you know, if there is. But there are only actually two houses in Green Lane, aren't there? Well, there's just 
There's a couple at the top, isn't there? And then there's a farm at the very bottom. Yeah, the bottom there, that's what I was talking about. It is something that does keep me surfacing, but we don't need to. Or not, as the case may be. I'm down to it. You said it. We've had the uh, police report, yeah. he's involved, we've discussed eight um, prison dog gates, so all those that would like to come, as I said, repeat, let them yeah. know, I'm saying it's due. Six or not, outside the prison, can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> in the training room. Yeah. Just, well, if we all meet in the car park at the prison, because you do have to go to the reception, yeah. obviously. Yeah, so you get signed in the prison. Correct, and then, yeah. then you... Yeah. Depending on where he takes you thereafter. Uh, flooding committee? No, we haven't heard anything. No. Well. <coughs> General <coughs> Council's report. Land at Martin to Woodlands. For those that don't know, <laughs> in the Woodlands <coughs> there seems to be an abundance of scrap. We oh. the one person. <laughs> It, it, well, not just the case, but and it seems to be spreading. And uh, what we're trying to do, not just the cells or the county council, the highways and the police, are all converging to try and get it sorted. Um, I am taking photographs because one minute is gone and the next minute it reappears again. And uh, I have spoken to the man, I've known the man 40 odd years, but that makes not a scrap of difference. <laughs> so he knows what I'm doing. And pointed out when I met him the other day. <laughs> so that's what's happening. That's what that is referring to, the land of Martin to Rollins. It's all to do with removing all this scrap. Then that's just an ongoing thing. It's been ongoing for It's been ongoing as long yes. as there's been a Paris Council. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not something that I anticipate will be done. Well, Philip Atkins said it in two weeks. Yeah, the, the county council came to discuss it and it was going to be done in two weeks. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Several Lots years, yeah, <laughs> and then the line. Oh, the defibrillator. Well then, would you? Yes, do we? Yeah. Yes, um, we're, the man come to put it in the box on three o'clock on the, on the last day, so it was a, <laughs> it was a full bit last minute, but anyway, yes, we got it done. Um, yeah. The electrician's working at the village hall this week. He's been uh, off ill, I think, with the same cough and cold. Yeah, that's we're all going to get. So he's going to boil the heat truck this week, um, and it will be. Well, it's operational now, but that will not well, that job. Will do, be. Does it work? <laughs> well, the. the, 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 the test it tonight. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, there is. Um, we need to check the battery on it once a month. So I don't know whether we, well, I mean, I, I don't mind doing it, or, or we can tag it onto the playing field inspection on <laughs> Just to add it to how we test it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what would be a bit more just for the man? We need to have it on Yeah, you're quite right, well, the man from, from uh, down the so he said that we, we really need to keep a, a record that it has been checked. Because if somebody drags it out one day and it doesn't do anything, um, it's when it's needed. <coughs> yeah. Do a bit of a form for that then. Okay. Cricket so, Club will be meeting tomorrow. <coughs> yes. <coughs> the cricket Club will be meeting tomorrow. Oh, I'm finished yet. Oh, no, you can't move on yet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we are. so, do you want it adding on to the yeah. monthly forms? Or yeah. We, yeah, okay. Please. I suppose we can check it as we come to the meeting, can't we, really? Yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I don't yeah. Okay, well I'll make sure you've all got a phone. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the way in which it works, if you, you ring 999, the, when you give your location, they'll, they'll, if you need the defibrillator, they'll be able to tell you where it is and they'll tell you, tell the person ringing of the combination for the lock. But, so it's, the, the lock number is not general knowledge. We, we, we will need to know it for checking the battery. Um, but it, the, the number's not common knowledge for security. 
Right. Okay. So it's not break the glass and no. go around it. No. no. <laughs> That'd be too simple. <laughs> Um, I had uh, Keith Dawson, and I think he's all spoke, also spoken to you, isn't he? Yes, yeah, so that was the chap that brought the uh, brought it out. Yes, he thought it was me that was there uh, when he brought it out. I was there when he brought it, but you yeah. <coughs> it wasn't me, if you see what I mean. Um, now he's talking about training. Um, uh, he seems very keen that some people ought to do some training, I think it was part of the agreement, wasn't it? Um, he can do evenings, he can do weekends, he can do four to five people or up to 40 people. Um, villagers as well as councillors, not just um, important people. Um, <laughs> anyone who would like to do um, Heart Start or CPR <coughs> or learning, you know. Yes, I think the defibrillator is, is, tells you what to do, doesn't it, when yeah. you use it, but um, just general training in the village hall here. So he's looking for dates and volunteers. Well, I'm a volunteer and then when, whatever date, is he looking for a date from us? Or? Yes, he's looking for a date from us. Well, should we pass it around the village and ask? Well, yeah, I think, do I think that would work, wouldn't yeah. it? Do you want to add it on to your chairman's report? Chairman's report or yes. put a note on there that um, volunteers. anyone interested in taking some training on um, yeah. okay. heart or mm -hmm. CPR, etc. Because. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I would say if everybody else is happy, I was going to write a little bit to put on the school newsletter as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can add that, yeah. 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 There was quite a bit of interest from, I want to say, the school kicking out time when we were setting it up, so okay. quite a bit of interest from there. Yeah, well, if we can get a group of people oh, together yeah. too. Yeah, well, if we can get each other for it, then it would be great. Yeah. 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 yeah, about two and a half hours for the, I think he said, for the, they could do just a defibrillator course. In an hour, but he would recommend a two and a half hours to go over CPR and you know, the general sort of uh, first aid. The CP doesn't work in carrying the CPR, do you? Mm. Okay, so. What's the thing that's a shock mm. is the CPR, for some reason, some people doesn't quite respond, so you have to carry them with CPR. Okay. So if anybody is interested, if they can uh, give either Richard or me yeah. their names and yeah, contact yeah, each other, then next month perhaps we can arrange yeah, a day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sounds great. Okay. Thanks a lot, Richard. Yeah. Oh, the cricket tool. Card. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Defibrillator for, for Woodlands. Can that do you want that in any other business? No, no, you can carry on with that because I had got details here that I contacted them to. Um, uh, say that we still got some money left over, and they, um, if they'd like to, they're interested. Yes, very interested. and I think Richard's spoken to. Uh, I can't remember his name. Just check off the village hall committee there. Brian Brown. Brian. Brian. No, Brian. No, Brian. Be, oh, yeah. no, Brian. Uh, come on, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm right. I just have no idea who it might be. Uh, Is it not Brian Brown? I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. Is it him? I thought it was him, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Him. It's just that they've asked me to go and report back to them tomorrow night. <laughs> and they're supposed to be giving us quotes. They're supposed to be giving you quotes. If they give us a quote, then obviously... And they will... I think they, that's why we said that they... Uh, how much was it? Did you work for what? Content. For the water. To put it in, because they, they will have to pay for the defibrillator, won't they? Because we had the defibrillator free and paid for the box. Right. Um, and they will have to, because they were too late, because it had, it had to be in by the end of April, which is what Richard was saying, right. um, to get the free defibrillator. Now I've given them somebody's number, the chap that you went to. Yes. Uh, I've already gave them then right. his contact details, but obviously if they are too late, then they need the source. 
But therefore, the money that was raised to pay for this one is not available <coughs> to the woodland. To pay for some of it, yeah. Some parts of it, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, there's still some more to come because they've had another evening. When I think um, he was taken ill and taken into hospital. He's actually recovered. Paul. 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 Yeah, so they're still raising money. We still, we haven't spent all they've given us. Um, there's still about five hundred pounds not spent, so there's that I think plus compensation. Definitely mm. confusion right. as to what's what state of affairs from what I heard today. Go on then. What do you well, that's why I want to sort it out. So I'll go back to it tomorrow and say this is what it is. Right. I mean, I don't know if Richard can give them the names of the people <coughs> that he contacted when he was sourcing it. Yeah, no, I'm going to say that probably the best bet for. The part funding one is, is British Art Foundation. Well, it was, unless it's old. But, um, if you pay the first four hundred pounds, <coughs> the Art Foundation will fund the rest of the defibrillator. That's about a thousand. But then you want the cabinet as well, which was certain number of inking the back, so it's about six hundred plus of that. Mm. Right, so they're looking at roughly 1100. Yeah. What was the business? It was a fire. People. So, are you saying there's still some funds available for other rates? There's, 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 there's about 500 pounds left over from what we've been given yes. yeah. already. But, they're but they're not, they're not they're not but they haven't redoing that. They've had another mm -hmm. event since then, so I'm assuming that at some point they will. And they're happy with that money to go basically to the Yes. Office. Yes, I asked him and he said he was happy for it to be put into the woodlands. Perhaps the best thing to do is to have a word with Mr. Neal and find out where did he go. Well, I think he'd probably wait till Andrew comes back because he normally gives it to Andrew and then Andrew Don't gives it to me to back. Yeah, probably. So, uh, but there will be enough, I'm sure. Mm. Right, so potentially it will cost me not yeah. Yeah. But don't work on that principle yet. No, yeah. and there's the, the wiring. The yeah, it's yeah. the electrician. Yeah. And then there's the meter. Meter, isn't that? Electricity. Electricity. Yeah, that's very good. And I assume that's just the bottom of the counter. Right. Okay. Thank you. The cricket club. For those that don't know, this is the cricket club that has been <coughs> given to the Paris Council. So it's <coughs> last meet, I think, is Brian and Lindsay. We we'll meet him tomorrow, don't we? Yeah. There to yeah. 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 be a lot of interest there, um, I would think, from not only from uh, starting the young cricket side with yeah. the boys and girls in the village and the and uh, whatever, but also, you know, uh, Marchington Football Club could use it. You know, as well as a, as a base. I mean, I can think. Yeah. Well, that was a football. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I mean, and, and then we can. Well, they haven't got anywhere to change, you see, for away teams or. So oh, it's really sorry. Yeah. So yeah. changing rooms. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, and the more you use it, the better it will be. That yeah. 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 And also, you see, you're tapping into <coughs> basically blokes who are, you know, there's plumbers, there's electricians, they're amongst these guys. And they, you know, you can get sort of work off them. You know, they could. So you can see it as something to to help the, the whole thing, but I, I would like to see um, you know youngsters starting yeah, again because there's people actually in the village. I mean, I'm not a cricketer to be honest with you, but there's lots of people who would train kids to uh, to play cricket yeah. again because it used to have a really thriving cricket club. Yeah. It used to have two teams. Twenty years ago, that's true. Yeah, world's changed you know. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a fantastic it's facility, it's like, uh, but yeah. it needs more usage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it could well, be used by the games the way that. Yeah, I think I <laughs> there would be lots of like minded people like myself who would want to get involved in that and, uh, we'll have to report back in the next meeting on what we're proposing.
Great. So that's definitely moving. <coughs> yes. Brilliant. <clears throat> right, the clerk's report. Bowyside Footpaths. Bowyside Footpaths, which is... My last meeting with just, Andrew Just Bridges. two seconds. The, those are the, the Forestside. There's, when it was an army camp, the, all the footpaths between all the houses. And the garage And the garage where they go. Um, it's just a, a bomb site. And nobody is claiming it, because it belongs to the... Well, you, you it, it wasn't adopted when they it was sold off. Um, and then the houses were sold off individually. And the company that bought it, Lock, Stock and Bell, went bust. So, you know, they went into receivership. So the actual bits in between has reverted to the Crown. Now, we contacted the Crown and they weren't prepared to do anything. Um, we've spoken to Scottish <coughs> County Council and ESBC previously and they've not been interested because of the state of it. They're, they're quite willing to adopt it if they, they're good, but they wouldn't adopt it as they are at the moment. So we've been round and round in circles um, with this, but Andrew Griffiths met with Andrew, <coughs> man and myself before the elections um, and walked round them with us um, and said yes, he would put his weight behind, if he got re-elected, he would put his weight behind getting Safety County Council and the SPC to do something about it because, as he said, they pay council tax the same as anybody else and are entitled to have pavements and garage areas. Um, obviously, if that happens, there will be some um, ownership sorting out because I think there are little individual pockets which have been registered with the land registry, rightly or wrongly, um, especially in the garage areas, but obviously if ESBC and um, Staffordshire County Council do um, take it over, then obviously their solicitors would sort that all out with the, um, the Crown. But his last words to me were that if he got in, then I could email him the next day. <laughs> and uh, he would arrange a meeting. I haven't emailed him as yet because uh, I thought I would do that when I come back um, and arrange a meeting with him when Andrew's around as well. And we can hopefully push that forward. Uh, if you haven't been up there, it's worth going up and having a walk around and it's seeing the estate. It's all the little alleyways between the housing of the estate. And okay. if you go down on Arborfield Road, there's a, a left turn to a, the garage area, so yeah. that's quite a big area. And that's in a terrible condition. Yes, and also, if it's in a bad condition, it encourages you know, people we'll to... Yeah, yeah. encourages... The trouble is, it's nobody's... It's nobody's um, Sometimes you get a band of people to get together and get do something as a whole, but they're rarely mm -hmm. the only. Well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a massive expense to, to bring them up. It would be. It would yeah, be. To take. Yeah. And our interest as well is the fact that the little path that goes towards the playground um, is in yeah. need of repair. Yeah, and true. they are very narrow paths between um, the houses. <coughs> Let's get rid of it. Yes, we had clean up day. We had um, about six people come. I've put some pictures on the website of some ladies uh, that uh, were, were there. We had one man and the rest were ladies. Um, I mean, I get a letter from you every year and um, <laughs> and the, the chairmanship of the Keep Factful, you know. <laughs> Which again is, but like most blokes, you need directing. Is that go and sort out that area rather than can you come and help because you know they're very sort of but yeah. well, you know it takes a while <laughs> so uh, I think it's far better if you tell us what to do and then I can you know we can get a lot of people and, right. and blitz yeah. somewhere seriously well, I mean perhaps, I think that's the best perhaps next practice. year when we're discussing what we're doing for the best get village then you'll as a tactic I think it's a better repeat thing. the same right. process and we can um, perhaps look at it that way um, uh, allocating something for, uh, for, for the keep that too. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, Henry <coughs> generally does a good job of keeping yeah. the village, and we have to say that, keeping the village. Yes, he does. Um, 
litter free, what most of the people were doing, they got little towels and they were digging up sort of weeds on the roadside and, and that sort of thing. Mm. But doing a very good job. Actually, generally speaking, the village is very, very litter free, generally speaking, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's saying flying around, much of what I do, I pick it up and put it in the changes. Just pack it once every month or something. Right. Yeah. And hopefully they will, when the weather's right, they'll put out the uh, hanging baskets at the village hall. And yeah. Oh, yeah, and, I, and, and just as well because it was a frost last week and there's a frost tonight. So Is there a frost tonight? Just be sure about that. Yeah. We don't want them to die. We need to get down quickly then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And you'll see all the notices. That's a good point. I'll press you on that. <laughs> all the notices have gone up as well. So, uh, oh, right. the uh, outstanding is a, a photography competition um, and a painting competition. I did send out um, <coughs> notices to you. Uh, Mike Marison, I think, might well be entering the photograph competition, but there's no restriction on how many people can enter. So if uh, if you know somebody who is um, good at painting or taking photographs, the competition is open until the beginning of June. Just uh, of the village, so the sites in the village. It, well, the theme is the best kept village um, competition, so you really got a free hand. This is a new one that they've done this year. They have the posters for the small children, which the school usually do for us, and they also had poems for small children. But the school weren't able to do that um, this time because they have a lot of requests from people to do things. Mm. Um, then there's an older one which is 11 to 13. We don't normally get involved with that because we don't have an older school. Um, one year um, we had a couple of entries but um, they didn't get anywhere on that. Um, but then this year they've introduced this one for adults and uh, I say for photography and um, paintings, and if anybody knows anybody, I have sent it round, but uh, just as a reminder. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. New items we discussing. We've got a request from the list web for hedging from the Woodlands Trust. Yes. Well, it, it is hedging. It is hedging. The Woodlands Trust have um, had. There we go. Um, Is that Liz who's from down Jack's Lane? Yeah, so. Yeah, um, it's Liz Yeah. What's been discussed is down Silver Lane where there was a, a fence and Henry's chopped a bit of a hedge down. There's, oh, a yeah, yeah. there's a bout, yeah, yeah, approximately 60 metres. Is it? Yeah. Not much. Yeah, so. We thought of putting it along there, and Linda spoken with Henry about whether or not he could remove it all, but it might be too much. So yeah. for him, it might be worth asking Blooming Gardens if they've got a little yeah. bigger or something yeah. to to yeah. just tidy it up and then you know, plant it all down there, yeah. just to, to tidy all that. Good idea. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Liz has been in touch with the. Um, the Woodlands Trust, um, and uh, we've had one or two emails so that I could understand what she's talking about, and they send them in out in packs. <coughs> it, it is 60 metres of hedging that you, you get, and she suggested Silver Lane, where we've uh, cut up the... Uh, I think Henry was needing to cut out some um, roots from the sort of strayed um, away from the hedging site itself. But um, it was Liz that spoke to Henry. Um, well, he inferred that he could do it, but yes, maybe it's yeah. a bit more for Henry. You say close for 60 meters. 60. 60, 60, 60 meters. Yeah. <laughs> it's only 94. It's a long way to dig out. <laughs> I don't fancy it. Not volunteering. <laughs> But if, if you're if you're mm -hmm. interested, then obviously I'll go back to Liz and yeah. say you're oh, interested sure. yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, take it yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. please. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, Blooming Gardens arrange it or something. What, Blooming or something? 
Well, if they've got a little digger, you know, maybe they could just whiz along with the digger and be a lot quicker than Henry. Yeah. Or oh, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think exactly where that's an opening. I think it's going to be something special. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Paul Blur could be there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving on, with correspondence. The Office and Street Crime Convention posters have been put up. Yeah, I think you've had most of the correspondence, <coughs> but. Email to that. And we have the, uh, the posters put up. Yeah, those are the posters. Okay. <coughs> there we go. <coughs> We've got an email from TGC Renewables for the exhibition at Martington Village Hall on the 28th of May, yeah. 3 to 7. <coughs> regarding the two solar farm developments in the land of Green Lane. Get as many people to attend that and say so, you no. Know, yeah. Well, reading it, it, it highlights that, if we understand it correctly, we get for 10 years, for every megawatt that the farm produces, we get a thousand pounds. Yeah. It's, I don't a year, that's a year. For 10 per years. Megawatt. Per megawatt. Per megawatt. Sure. For ten years. It's a four and a half megabyte. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because well, well, they're, they're assuming, because there's something strange here, there's two solar <coughs> yeah. It's in two. It's only one. No, it's it's one farm. Mm. Yeah, it's one farm, but it's only one farm. Oh, it's but it, it, it's yeah. cut into okay. two. Yeah, okay. yes. Two fields, in fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I mean, it's tempting to think you're going to get. Well, that's what I was joking earlier on. I said, if we had 10 yeah. so far, we'd be doing it. <laughs> but, but it's true, that's what they're doing. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. Direction, yeah. You know, so, you know, do all the various parts actually, and you've got to just kind of give away everything. Well, I think, you know, from our point of view, that if you can let as many people know as possible to turn up and mm -hmm. voice their opinion, whether that be for or against yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Well, the developer should be probably good emails, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, so yeah, I'll utilise that, it'll be great, mm. yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've already sent it to, uh, to Ryan, but I don't know, has he passed it on? Not yet, no, I haven't seen that one. Oh, no, okay. I shall appreciation, Brian, to Brian. Token of appreciation, Brian. Brian, we've had a, an email from Philip Atkins. Counselor. Can I just, sorry, so, can I just go back to that? I, we've had an email alongside that from Julian Blakemore um, expressing um, concern about it. So uh, I think that needs to be taken uh, into account as well. Yeah, but we've already had a case against it or an argument yeah, against it. Yeah, yeah, as I say, yeah. that's uh, yeah, something to take into account. So, oh, we've had an email from Philip Atkins, read the Iron Man event. Yeah. What exactly is that? Some kind uh, of I've written down here, what is it? Triathlon. Is it what? I think it's a really oh, triathlon. Oh, triathlon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's been started in Australia. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 All sorts of variations on it, you know, climbing mountains. Nothing to do with drink. Nothing to do with drink. That's how I'm doing. I'm doing a big event. How is it triathlon? Much more than the endurance, it's a bit more than a nightmare. It's a big long one. It's a trip down the road. Well, they're closing the road around Martington and then the. More than the leaves. On the way, yeah, very good. Yeah, well, from here to, well, from Martington all down the road through the Woodlands to Queen Lane up to where the Red Cow is. They're closing all that, then closing the Bromley Road. All the way down there. Oh, well, it's got a, quite a it's, mm. Yeah, it is. I have no idea how many people mm. participate. International people. You think you're taking part this year? Mm. Not this year. No, well, this obviously, year. obviously yeah, next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, next year. Yeah, I've just missed it. <laughs> I would suspect it's fairly big considering the closing all the Well, yeah, from three but till seven, time. it's mm. a long time. So yeah, there's a lot of strength. Yeah, that's one. <laughs> I did wonder, I saw these four characters coming through the Marginson village, was it last Sunday or the Sunday before? The children looked so absolutely exhausted, I wonder why they were pushing themselves, because if you were about, you know, 55, 60, I do wonder whether there's a risk factor there. 
got defibrillated. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Fine. Not yet, we haven't. <laughs> Better train someone. <laughs>
Oh, it's the one with the metal handrails. And two. Yeah. <coughs> I haven't got done that maybe Over the brook. Over the brook. Um, that's about to explain it to you, really. Not from your house. Up the hill, down the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. brook. Yeah. Across the fields field, over the brook. We'll, we'll say we place that one, because it's been washed away. I know where you Then mean. the next one, further on down, it's... I mean, know like that. Mean, like I know where you mean now. Yeah. 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 I've just got one thing that I've already mentioned to Linda, the road sign in the top of Gorsty Hill by Johnny Beaches is the sign, Thorny Lanes, is wedged in his tree. So I just want to make sure that we get that put back in the road. Good. That's it. Thank and you. I'd just like to say thank you all very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Th